Good afternoon, everybody. Um, glad to be here. Um, great conference so far, I think. Uh, love the venue. Uh, weather is great today. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, myself first, uh, for those of you that don't know me, and what the heck we are doing with Joomla, uh, and why Joomla has any place in enterprise or in corporations and large companies, and what, what we're doing with that. Uh, before we do that, um, I want to tell you a little bit about how this whole thing got started. Um, I'm a little bit of a motorcycle buff myself. Um, it's as a hobby, I, I custom build motorcycles uh, or customize them, right? And this is actually me at the racetrack uh, racing one of those motorcycles. And it, it's actually that motorcycle that wanted to make me build a website. Uh, in uh, late 2006, early 2007, because there were rumors that uh, a certain manufacturer would come out with this motorcycle. And so Alpha went and built the Joomla 1.0 website with a forum. And so it started, started out as a, as a user, as a hobby, and uh, everything Joomla that came after that basically started out with me uh, building a website for motorcycles. Uh, I spent the last seven years uh, at eBay uh, and was responsible there for uh, the analytics platform. Uh, for those of you um, that don't know the details, basically uh, we're talking big data systems, systems that are huge in size. Uh, we're talking systems where a single system can hold more than 100 petabytes of data and where thousands of analysts or users go into that data to find insight, to find out why certain customers do or do not buy something, or why certain things happen the way they happen on their website, right? Um, uh, just to give you a perspective, uh, something like the eBay website uh, produces about 30 petabytes of data a year. Uh, and that's all the click stream, that's all the server logs, that's all the transactions, that's all the, uh, you list an item, I bid on an item, um, and every page view in, in there, right? So humongous amounts of data. And uh, over the years, we have learned to use that data uh, for a lot of different things. And one of the, one of the big use cases is experimentation. Um, uh, if you go to any of the large internet companies uh, today, any change that is being made to any web page is not done just by guessing what the next iteration of a partic particular uh, uh, view should look like. The way, the way companies like eBay do this is they usually build three to five different versions of something and then and then show 1% of the customers one version, another percent a different version, and then somebody else the original, right? And basically see how do people react when we change some of the design of the website, right? Is that workflow now easier for customers? Does it require less clicks in the end? Does it, does it get people quicker from I search for an item to I purchase an item, right? So a lot of that gets experimented and uh, 10 years ago, uh, we called it the, uh, the hippo syndrome, uh, the highest paid opinion. Uh, whenever there were ideas, usually the one of the highest paid in the room would win, right? Uh, and, and companies would make really bad mistakes because of that, right? Because your intuition sometimes tells you the wrong thing. And it's with experimentation and using that data that you can really uh, look at, at uh, multiple options and know which one is actually better. So big data platforms, uh, a, a, a service that we call analytics as a service, uh, we pretty much cloud enabled these big data services uh, to a point where any analyst within the company could self-provision uh, uh, their own virtual database in less than five minutes and have access to all of this tens and tens of petabytes of data within a click of a, of a button. Now, because of that, because of that service enablement, we needed 
a web front end to that, right? And how do you do that? You either custom build something completely, right? Uh, and we started looking at open source technologies because the tech stack that we built for the eBay website was not necessarily, or was, was, was probably a little bit over-specialized for being an auction site and not a generic interface that you would use for other websites like content management, right? And so this is where, where Joomla came into play. And we built something uh, that we called the Data Hub, uh, basically an intranet website, uh, Joomla uh, website, a social network around data, uh, where you could follow other analysts in the company, or you could join groups, or you could uh, start discussions, you could search for any report, any data element that you were, that you were looking for, and basically put the whole social experience around that. Uh, and we started uh, contributing, uh, and, and currently the eBay team, there's, uh, so Kyle is here from the eBay team, uh, there's, there's uh, quite a few developers and contributions happening from that. So that, that was my past, uh, that's where I came from. Uh, I also have a little bit um, experience in the Joomla world uh, nowadays. I started the Kunina project uh, in uh, late 2008, uh, actually after meeting Lewis at a free BSD uh, party, uh, and he encouraged me to do so. And so we, we, we first released Kunena in 2009. Uh, Matthias uh, joined, uh, joined me back then to, uh, uh, to start that team. Uh, it has grown ever since. Uh, there's there's uh, quite a large community around it. Uh, we have over 2 million downloads uh, since then. Uh, I think it's about 1 in 10 Joomla downloads nowadays does a Konina download as well. Uh, we, we could never envision that. As that was, it was not planned to build something that big, right? Uh, and it's, it's a community-based uh, 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 project. There is no commercial entity behind it. There is no... Uh, um, there, there is no uh, a company behind it. And so we basically tried to model pretty much what, what Joomla is doing on a much sm smaller scale. And just to let you know, Conina 2.0 is about here. Uh, they just, we just released the beta version of that. Uh, and it has been written to support like tens of millions of posts on a single server and does advanced caching and uses Bootstrap. We have heard all about Bootstrap. So we have a, a Bootstrap template in the works right now that is about to get finished and hopefully will do away with the I need to customize my forum to my uh, site template once and for all. Um, so that's Kunina. Uh, if you're interested, uh, go to GitHub, look it up. Uh, you see some of the members uh, that are actively engaged with the project. Uh, encourage all of you to, if, if you, if you want to contribute something just like with anything else, go join the team or go fork it, go uh, make a pull request. Uh, we are very grateful for every, every uh, donation of code that, that we get. So currently, I'm, um, for the last eight months, uh, I switched to uh, Sears Holdings. Um, and I realize Sears might not be a name that a lot of people know outside of the United States. It's a US-based company, a very old company. Uh, it got started 1886 by uh, uh, a man called Richard Sears, uh, and he started selling watches uh, back then. And Sears became this huge company that uh, uh, went through a lot of transformations over the years, uh, is going through a huge transformation uh, today. Uh, uh, it's basically selling in over 3,900 stores uh, in North America, uh, anything from tools to lawn and garden, to home appliances, if you, have a, if you need a dishwasher or uh, um, electronics uh, uh, and clothing, uh, for example, uh, are, are some of the main things. And then uh, the company merged under Sears Holdings with Kmart, which is a big uh, retail store for food and, 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 uh, and related items. It's more than 300,000 employees. So this is a big company, and it's certainly the biggest company that I've ever worked for. Um, and it comes with some very interesting challenges, uh, as you can imagine. How do you, how you, how do, you do anything with 300,000 people? How do you motivate 300,000 people, right? How do, you, how do you deal with thousands of stores out there? Um, just to show you, these are some of the brands 
that Sears Holdings owns. Uh, Kenmore is the big home appliance uh, brand, Craftsman Tools, uh, Die Hard Car Batteries, and then there's a lot of other brands that are uh, specific to, to Sears Holdings. Again, a lot of diversity and a lot of different things that are happening there. We also just launched, and this is uh, very dear and new to my heart, we just launched a, a startup company called Metascale, uh, where we are actually um, uh, uh, servicing uh, big data needs for other companies. So the team that I brought together that came with me and joined me with that, we are actually starting to sell big data services to other companies. And we're talking to some of the very large corporations. The, this is the, the, the initial website right now. It's not by any means done. It's by the way done on Joomla. Uh, so it's, uh, we are starting to use Joomla in, in various different ways. This is certainly one of them. And I expect to be spending a lot of time with Metascale over the next couple of years. Uh, and uh, this is where uh, Joomla will play a very significant role. So let's talk about open source and the enterprise. Why, why do companies adopt open source in an enterprise, right? And it's maybe 10 years ago, open source was this weird thing that lots of companies looked at, but they weren't sure, is it secure, right? I mean, uh, do, I, do, I, do I create a problem if I bring open source in? I think that has changed dramatically, right? I mean, today, if you go into a corporation, open source is a building block of a lot of corporations. In fact, for, for us, CS Holdings, it's a strategic decision uh, that we made to go as much open source in the future as possible. Now, there's, there's always going to be some, some, uh, some products, some technologies that you need to purchase because there's no open source equivalent uh, available for that. But for everything that you have open source choices, we are going to do open source. And uh, that starts with uh, Linux as server platforms. That uh, includes th uh, technologies like Hadoop for uh, 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 data processing at large scale, right? Uh, that includes things like Joomla for uh, web services and content management, right? So a lot of companies uh, go through this thinking first, let's, uh, the first stage usually is open source. Oh, it's just free, right? I get free stuff, right? And I just download free stuff and that's, that's the great, uh, uh, the, the, the great world of open source. And first of all, it's not free, and that's a, so that's a big myth, because you need people to run whatever you run, right? Whether it's an open source software stack or whether it's a commercial stack, you need people to operate it. You need servers to run it on, right? Nothing is ever free. When you look at the total cost of ownership, it costs something. Um, it's also, it's the wrong motivation. You don't do it because the software is free, right? Uh, then companies start thinking about it more, more strategically and say, you know what, I see, I see the difference that open source communities uh, uh, make. I see the progress in development. I see how, um, how, how, how products develop and they start strategically uh, adopting open source as, as technologies, not because it's free, but because of a whole set of dimensions, including uh, rapid progress in many areas on development, right? Not being tied to a commercial entity that might change their mind uh, from one year to the other, and then you are stuck with that technology. But it really is not until you hit the active engagement and contribution where you start realizing as a company that I want to be part of that community. I want to contribute back the work that I'm doing because some of that work that I'm, that I'm, that I'm making to customize something like Joomla, for example, I don't want to have to, to keep this as a fork and maintain this for years to come. And whenever there's a new release, trying to backport that in there, right? So once you start realizing that if, if I can contribute back, if I can set up the legal framework to make that happen, uh, for example, uh, uh, sign the Joomla contributor agreement, right, and contribute back into the core, it helps us then to really benefit from the community in terms of all the development that's happening. Also, help the community with 
new additions that we need, uh, and, 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 and enterprises certainly have uh, slightly different needs, right? I mean, LDAP integration is a good example one. We need very solid LDAP integration, right? And so, um, you might not need this on some of the smaller websites that you're running, uh, but I think there's a great opportunity for companies and open source communities to work together and benefit from each other, right? It only works if it's a win-win. And, and, and some people, um, some, some people are sometimes afraid in open source communities when a, a company like eBay or like Sears comes in and says, oh my God, are they trying to take over the project, right? Are they going to buy the community? And, and my answer is like, you can't buy a community, right? You can't take over a community. A community comes together because they like to come together and not because you tell them so, right? And so if, if people think that a company can come in and change that, that's wrong, right? And, and I think any company that tries to do that is set up for failure. And, and so it's really, for us, uh, starting to realize that we can unlock the power of open source beyond just installing free software, but really starting to contribute, enhance these pieces, and contribute them back into the, into the community, because ultimately it makes the whole product a better product. So why Joomla? Uh, I think even somebody here asked me, like, Shouldn't you be using Drupal for that? Right? Aren't data guys that, that do all the enterprise and corporate gigs, right? It's like, uh, maybe, but for us it was a very clear no. We looked, at, we looked at Drupal, we looked at WordPress, we looked at Joomla, we looked at a lot of stacks. And uh, the, the reason why we like Joomla so much is not one reason, but it's, it's a set of things, right? Um, I think of it as the most active and engaged community out there in the world. This is, this is, yeah. It's, it's, it's built on community. You get accepted as part of the community. You can contribute as part of the community, right? And it's not a single kingdom or a single person that ultimately my way or the highway uh, decides what to do, right? So uh, uh, a huge, uh, huge benefit is the community. I think it has one of the best platform architectures. Uh, and I like, I like a lot where this is going with the, with the Joomla platform. Uh, I, I like a lot of the work that obviously the UCM is, is very exciting work to go beyond just content management, but have all kinds of, 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 of different types of content in there. Uh, very excited about the standardization around bootstrap and some of the new uh, themes that are coming in. Uh, and the platform architecture is something that uh, we like because when we build applications on that, they're very straightforward to build and you benefit a lot from the underlying ar architecture, right? Everything is built as a platform from the beginning, and that, that helps. Uh, huge selection of components and plugins, that matters a lot, right? Because um, when we put together an internal website uh, and we want to throw something, try something out, it's great to have all these components and plugins to get you started, right? Whether it's a chum social, if you want a social site, or community builder, or, uh, or forums, Kunina. <laughs> Uh, it just gets you started that much faster, right? Because companies traditionally have tried to write all of that themselves or buy very specialized, expensive software packages. Uh, and so if I look internally right now, uh, we have done a lot of work over the years on Microsoft technology stacks. Uh, a lot of our intranet websites, and again, 300,000 people. So the intranet is a big intranet in that place, right? We have multiple internet websites. They're usually .NET. Uh, or ASP, uh, uh, um, and you don't have the framework that you have in Joomla. The licensing costs are going through the roof on these, uh, on these platforms, and so we actually made a strategic uh, decision that we're going to migrate off of all these Microsoft products over the next couple of years and go full open source with all of that. We already have some of them uh, uh, up and running on Linux and, uh, and, and uh, uh, Joomla, but the adoption will go much, much higher than that in the next couple of years. Um, and then we, we like it for its agility and rapid prototyping, right? I mean, to come up with an idea for an application and put something together, you can do this in a couple of days. A working prototype is usually done very, very quickly. 
might not have all the bells and whist whistles that you want to have ultimately, but I think this is where we're benefiting from the, from the build-out of the platform and from uh, the new UI uh, elements, for example. So, um, why, why do we use it for big data analytics, right? And what is big data analytics? So, uh, we use Joomla pretty much as a service layer. Uh, to hide these monstrous computer systems. And we're talking really monstrous systems. We're talking uh, uh, clusters, Hadoop clusters, with 1,000 or 2,000 servers in them, right? In a single instance. We're talking about commercial databases like Teradata that are hundreds of uh, cabinets in a data center that consumes a megawatt in power for just one computer, right? These are massive, massive things. Now, the problem is our audience uh, internally are business people, marketing people, finance people, analysts, right? They are no experts in computers. They certainly don't want to log into a Linux box and try to do something on a command line, right? So we need very simple self-service uh, interfaces uh, for them to leverage these platforms. And that's what we use Joomla for. We build the service layer, the web service layer, in front of all these big systems based on Joomla. Uh, so it's, it's, it's basically turning, uh, uh, here, here are some typical data science uh, 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 graphs uh, where, where we plot and process billions and billions of data points and we wrap these things into, into a framework that is very easy to access uh, and uh, courtesy of eBay. Uh, this is, this is uh, a screenshot of the, of, of the homepage of the Data Hub or an, a version of it. I think there are one or two versions newer now. The idea is any sort of chart, graph, data element, you can click the search, uh, the search uh, and start searching it. And we have indexed all the metadata, all the data models, all the data elements, all the reports that have ever, ever been created within a company, right? And you can collect them in your own workspaces. So basically, you have personal workspaces here that are, that are built on the, on the uh, UCM where you can plug in what I just showed you was a Tableau visualization. You can plug that right into the web page here. You can stick other documents right in here. So you have a personal home page that you can go to with your own personal activity stream of the people or the, the data elements that you're following. You can follow and like things. That allows us then to how is the community of analysts working together who, and, and, for example, help with the search results, right? Uh, and, and push up things in the search results that more people like or more people follow than other things. Right? And when you talk about uh, some companies uh, at that scale um, have over 100,000 data elements that, that, that eBay is dealing with. Right? There's nobody in that company that knows a data model inside out with 100,000 data elements, right? So you need to have things like search. You need to have things like community around it. You need to have forums where people can go up there and say, hey, you know what? I'm trying to analyze this. I, I don't know where to start or what, you know, what's, what's the right data set that I need to go to, to to do this, right? So there's a whole front end for that, but it also includes things like, and this is where our uh, special application uh, uh, applications come in. There is tools like I just mentioned that uh, I want a, a virtual database. We call it the Virtual Data Mart Manager. It's basically an app here on Joomla where you can say up to 250 gigabytes or up to a terabyte, um, I want my own virtual slice of that big monster machine for my own data. And it will provision that for you. So there, there's no longer an IT ticket. You don't go somewhere, right? This is where cloud meets analytics. It's all self-service enabled where you can provision your own database and within less than five minutes, you will, you will get an email in your inbox here that says, your instance is ready to go. And then we have tools to load data into it, to copy data into it, uh, and then templates for how to put something like Tableau to visualize some of that data against that, right? Uh, so it's all about self-service enabling that and getting kind of out of the way when people need to do anal analytics with, with, with the data. Um, so I think I talked about most about that. It's about self-service. It's about analytics as a service that requires community features, right? Uh, so it's not that different from many of, the, of your websites that you're building, where you want a community, where you want uh, forums and groups and activity streams, and then some custom applications, uh, as I mentioned, plus 
things like monitors that we write. So for example, you can go up on that site and see exactly how busy these systems are, right? Or you can look at how efficient are they running, right? Or how efficient is my workload running? Uh, and then things like chargeback models where we charge different groups in a company for using these systems, right? Because these systems are multi-million dollar, large, large systems. Somebody needs to pay uh, for, for using that. So we wrap all of that basically into one front and one stop shop uh, for, for analytics based on Joomla. Um, let's talk about, uh, and I need to wrap it up here uh, fairly quickly. Let's talk about some trends that, that we're also seeing. Uh, social, obviously, big, big trend in the industry. Gamification, not sure how many of you are familiar with that concept. It's a huge thing, and it's huge for a company like Sears Holdings with 300,000 employees. A lot of our employees are young people, 16 to 20 years old, without a college degree, in stores, associates that work there, they work with customers. How do you motivate them? Well, the old way was, and that didn't work, sent them every month a 600-page binder about corporate policies and what we want them to do. It doesn't work, right? I mean, it's like, uh, it's throwaway. So this is where gamification comes in. This is like, how do you make a game out of your going to work every day, right? And so just to give you two examples, we have two things up and running. They are right now not uh, on open source technology, but this, these are some of the uh, goals that we're looking at. We have Pebble. Pebble is our internal Twitter. Um, it allows everybody in the company to shout out whatever they want to say, follow other people, and it's being used all the way from, from the youngest associate all the way up to the chairman of the board. Everybody's on that, and when the chairman wants some, something that everybody should know, he, he goes on, on, on it and he, and he writes it, and people follow each other, right? Again, with 300,000 employees, there's, there's tens of thousands of, of messages every day that get... Uh, um, thrown out there. And the other thing is a website that is really, really interesting. It's called Game On. It's, our, it's an internal competition site. Uh, if you join as an employee uh, and you work in one of our stores, you're automatically part of a team. You're automatically part of a... Uh, most of you here are familiar with soccer. It would be probably football or baseball in the United States. Uh, we pin stores in regions, in districts, <laughs> against each other and run competitions. Every competition has a, has a certain time period, and then every store and every associate has a chance to win in that competition, and they get monetary uh, uh, rewards for that. So they get, they get coupons or they get money for winning certain levels in there. And, and the way it works is we have turned certain key business metrics, like uh, how much did you sell, of course, right? Or uh, 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 what was your customer satisfaction scores uh, in that store? We pin them against each other and give them a weighting. And basically, associates can go in there every day and see how they are doing based on what they just have done yesterday in the store, right? So we are turning all of that into a game-like experience, and it's great to see the adoption of that. It's a totally different ball game all of a sudden, right? No more manuals. Now it is like people in forums discussing, sharing best practices, and then getting rewarded by winning in, in, their, uh, in, their, in their leagues. So it's in principle like a sports website. Think of it like Yahoo Sports, where you go and you find all the scores. It's just you are the player, and you see your own scores there, right? Uh, and yeah, I wouldn't be here if I wouldn't say we are hiring, right? Uh, uh, we are looking for, and I think it, it was actually floated around, uh, we are looking for an uh, experienced Joomla architect. It's all over the internet. I think it even made it into some of the Google, uh, Google groups. Um, so if you know good people, do let us know. Uh, with that, uh, we have time probably for one or two questions. Um, if you have any, I'd be happy to answer. So, so the question, to, to repeat so that everybody hears it, have I learned anything from open source communities that we are now adopting and, and using? And I, I think I can honestly say I've learned more from open source communities over the last three, four years than I have learned about software development the prior 15 years uh, to that. Uh, it is, what, what is most amazing to me is 
and, what, and, and, and I had the opportunity with the Cunena team to work together. When you come together in a team, it's not like a corporation where you can tell somebody to do something, right? Uh, a community comes together because of self-motivation, because of the pride of doing the work. And yet, people around the world, all of you, right, come together on a regular basis and build some of the greatest pieces of software out there, right? And so, we have, we've learned a lot about that. It made us better having virtual people. Uh, working with teams that are distributed and not all sit in Chicago or in San Jose, but I'm totally okay hiring people anywhere basically in the United States because I know if you do it in a way an open source community works, it doesn't matter where your location is, right? You can contribute to that. Uh, and then certainly I think the adoption of things like GitHub, integration testing, you would not believe how far behind some of the corporations are in, in, in terms of, of, of taking these technologies, right? And when they do it, they automatically go to a big IBM or whatever other company and say, go build me a solution for that. And that usually then doesn't meet their needs and yet it costs millions of dollars, right? So a lot of learnings from there and we're actually building the next generation of analytics as a service with a lot of the learnings from open source and in fact, contemplating to build a, a, a developer platform ourselves for analytics as a service that we are potentially open sourcing ourselves. So, because that's, it's really interesting. So, uh, with that, um, I think there is uh, one more thing um, that, uh, what was that? Um, wait a second, hold on, hold on, wait a second, Oliver. Wait, hold on. I gotta say something, okay? This is the greatest community 